The setup for this chapter is crazy. Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 160 is great. I, I have no complaints. It seems short, but it's really giving a perspective of what's about to go down. And I think we're going to have another great arc. Like, this has the potential to be just as good as Shibuya, maybe if not better. I'm telling you guys, the way this is looking, we're going to have a crazy, crazy arc on our hands, right? But, uh, hey, we're here for another review, and I'm just going to kind of break things down, right? So, yeah, let's just get into it, right? So, chapter 160, title is Colony, right? So we start out with Kenjaku. Now Kenjaku wakes this person up. And at first I'm like, okay, who is this person? Have we seen this person before? At first I thought it was a dude, but it's actually a girl, right? So he basically, through her, and we'll get to who this is in a second, but through her, he is explaining what's going on, right? It's sort of this dream that she's in and he's basically explaining that he's made this barrier right and we know this barrier as like the the colonies right so he and i'll just you know quickly read this there lies the remnants of an old execution ground a short distance from here that is where the center of the barrier is i'd say it has a radius of about five to six kilometers i had to jump through quite some hoops to make sure this barrier or quite some hoops to make this barrier so i can't be un i can't place unreasonable conditions now this is the key part here because he within this barrier is like one big prefecture right so all these people are trapped in here but we know for a fact that he's had to go through a lot of hoops like he said in this chapter and chapters before to make these to make the barrier to get this calling game set up all the vows that he's made with jujutsu sorcerers in the past he's gone through a lot so the people already inside the barrier have a chance they have a chance to leave and not have to deal with this stuff at all. They have a one-time chance, right? And jumping ahead a little bit, they have, if I'm if I'm getting all this correct, they have seven days to basically decide because the calling game will for sure start where people, all the vows that he made, everything, it will start in seven days, right? So, um... This is also another key part. Um, he, uh, the woman asks, when I wake up, when I wake up, is this a dream? And this is actually interesting because this concept I, is kind of new to us, right? Kenjaku says, this is the rift between dreams and reality, the cursed realm. So he's able, and this goes back to, if you remember way back when, Kenjaku was explaining how um, how to activate cursed power. Um, everybody's got cursed energy, but how to activate like a cursed technique latent in somebody that doesn't inherently have one. And it had something to do with the reconfiguration and rewiring of the brain, right? Um, and an example of that would be Sumiki. When she wakes up, she will now have a cursed technique um and a part of that awakening from being a regular person to a sorcerer with a cursed technique has to do partly with one the vow that he made but two a reconfiguration of like the brain to where they're able to i guess subconsciously in a sort of way be able to have the ability to have a cursed technique through one the vow and two curse energy right kind of kind of sounds weird but i can i can dive into that more in another video but this the, the between dreams and reality is the curse realm right and that's how he's able to speak to her and all the other people that we'll soon find out about right and he says you know move with caution move with caution there's a lot of people that want to kill and then we get this crazy panel of this I don't know what this thing is, but I see like pterodactyls in the sky. I see this giant cursed monster. And I see on the roof, like it looks like two people. Like there's a lot going on right now. Um, and after analyzing this chapter a little bit more, 
I thought she was either two things are happening here. She's in a dream laying on her bed and this is them walking in her dream or she's essentially uh, she's sleepwalking and I think she's actually sleepwalking because they're walking down this bridge area right here. We see the stuff in the background and then Kenjaku says and this is again a confirmation of what we already knew oh yeah i almost forgot to tell you thank you for getting along with my son so kenjaku has known about these people and now the connection he just made there this person this woman is um um oh gosh i'm blanking on the name hang on ah, i see i had her name earlier uh i believe it's sakaguchi right uh hang on hang on guys ah i hate having to do this live but f it right um because let me see oh no sasaki okay sasaki right guys sorry about that but her name is sasaki and she was one of the people in episode one that was a part of itadori's club she was in the occult club along with iguchi who we see right here okay so after after she hears thank you for getting along with my son she wakes up and he's like iguchi i'm glad there's someone i know here so i don't know like i said earlier i don't know if they everybody was like sleepwalking got out of bed and arrived here or she was like daydreaming i, I don't know but i think she was sleepwalking and like kijaka was explaining like i'll lead you to where you need to go just because he was trying to guide her to where everybody's at now, right? So, we find out it's Sasaki, it's a Gucci. They're both a part of the occult club. Way back in episode one or chapter one, whatever, right? Um, and then we get this crazy shot of this barrier, and it's 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 huge. Um, and Gucci asks, "What do you think as a member of the occult club?" And she says what do i think and we get up uh, listen this panel right the panel i am looking at is insane gege's i think gege's gotten a lot better drawn by the way but this panel is insane man uh, first off i thought this barrier would kind of be like spherical kind of like a if you were to put a slice between the earth and then lay it kind of flat it would look like a sphere on the ground but no it's like a it's a cylinder and it's it's crazy it's like this thing is nuts and on the bottom right you can see it says november 1st and 602 i'm guessing that's 602 in the morning because i see that some people are in their pajamas right so that's a little detail i picked up on um and then another key thing here is that sasaki asked did he tell you too uh, something about his son no first i've ever heard of it and she kind of puts two and two together and she's like and she was like itadori so she's got an idea that that person was talking about itadori right now that's basically the first part crazy crazy stuff a lot of cool key information and we're getting the scale of this colony game i'm telling you guys this this game is going to be insane i was not expecting to like get this kind of perspective right but we're back with the gang right we got uh itadori megumi panda figuring stuff out so they're looking for angel they can't find her panda mentions well maybe angel isn't necessarily her real name like itadori you're essentially sakuna right um and then megumi mentions that well tengen said that she's in the eastern side of tokyo so she's inside colony number two um and then they're kind of conversating back and forth do you know what she looks like uh apparently we'll know once we see her which we have seen her before you will definitely know once you see her she is literally an angel in the sky <laughs> you will know when you see angel <laughs> right so we get um Hakari's plan and he says Panda and I will go to Tokyo number two Fushigoro and Itadori number one and Kirara is going to stand outside of the barriers right to keep uh to keep an eye out 
And his reasoning for this is because the Kishimo guy seems to be the strongest, so can, um, Hikari wants to deal with that. And Panda, he has a good nose, so maybe he could somehow, some way, sniff out Angel or something like that. And then Kirara, basically because we have no outside contact, so she would be able to observe the situation from outside. And also, too, another tidbit is that they have no contact with Okotsu, so they can't do anything. Right? So, um, we also get a little argument between Megumi and Itadori, and basically Itadori wants to split from Megumi because of Sukuna, uh, Sukuna, and <laughs> basically Megumi is just telling him to shut up and, like, stop being so selfish, even though he's looking out for Megumi because of what Sukuna is trying to do with, um, him. And Megumi's like, look, like, just our three seniors are telling us what to do. Like, stop being selfish. And then Panda's like, don't fight. And now I want you guys to pay attention. After we get that, after we get them fighting, it says November 12th, 12 p.m. Tokyo. Seven days and 12 hours remain until the time limit for Sumiki's vow to participate in the Cullen Games. They have seven days and 12 hours to get Sumiki out of there before her curse technique activates and she has to participate in the calling games. Seven days. And if we go up to the beginning of the chapter, when Sasaki and Iguchi woke up, that was November 1st. So that was well over a week ago. Um, or wait, a little less than a week ago, but we don't know what they've decided at this point maybe they've gone and left maybe sasaki might have stayed because she's worried about itadori right we don't exactly know but we're gonna find out right we're getting we're starting to get a lot of players and i hope no one's been disappointed in like the people that he's been introducing in these culling games because i think it's really important because we're going to get a lot of new characters and we're going to get a lot of characters that we've seen before it's gonna get crazy people are gonna die man so guys we got to pay attention to every little detail but again it's been that that was a long time ago so who knows what they've decided um itadori's classmates right so then finally we get kogane basically explaining that this is a death match known as a calling game are you sure you want to enter this barrier and of course hakari panda yes and then Itadori and Megumi, no problem. And that's the chapter. So, we're getting a lot of perspective and what's about to go on. The The scale of this is insane. Just looking at this panel of the barrier is crazy. Um, this whole dream, um, dream versus uh, the part between dream and reality being the curse realm, I find as a very interesting concept as he's able to talk to these people through that cursed realm right in their technically in their sleep actually which is why i think that everyone was sleepwalking and then they woke up like next to each other right because there's no other way he could talk to them if this if the state they have to be in is like dreaming and reality so anybody he's talking to they're sleeping which is why i think the time 602 even though there's no distinction between am and pm i think it's am because she's walking out in her pajamas and other people in the panel are in their pajamas as well. So, that's how I've kind of pieced this all together. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be a very crazy... Like, here's the thing. Shibuya was a 10 out of 10 for me. The mini arc with Maki was a 10 out of 10 for me. That, that... You, you see my review on that. Go back to my review on that. That was literally a movie. That is in my title. This arc is a movie. That arc was a movie. It was like it was on some Kill Bill, Kill Bill shit. Seriously, um, this is gonna be insane, guys. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. I don't want to make this any longer, uh, but let me know if you've got any questions in the comments.